we're out here today with um, Finnegan's Farm. Um, so we're out with Kevin. Kevin, what um, spots are you harvesting here today? Uh, we're digging roosters here today. Um, this is the last crop we have to dig. We have all the car pinks and the queen's dog, so it's all roosters from now on in, so it is. Very good. And I suppose harvest conditions are very good this year? Harvest conditions are very, very good, yeah. Um, we've had a, a massive run of luck with it. Like we, I don't know, we might have seen one or, day, one or two days rain, but all it does is really kept the dust down. It hasn't affected us at all, and we're we're getting through a nice bit of ground now, thank God. So, hopefully, another probably a week or two, and we'll be well on. Like, yeah. I'll be I'll be done. Very good. So, what other varieties besides the roosters would you do? Um, they do an awful lot of car pinks. Um, they they supply into Duns. I think I think they're the sole um, supplier of car pinks into Duns. So, any car pinks you buy in Dun stores is all all from Finnegan's farm. Um, and then they, they do obviously a few early queens and um, then they do the roosters which is their, their, their main crop. Very good. So they do all their own packing as well, yeah, don't they? Yeah, all brought back and then they do pre-made meals as well. Let's say um, your potato gratins, your croquettes, all into Dunn stores. So um, that's, they've done that probably the last three or four years and that's really, really taken off now. So it is, they're after actually building a new um, pack house there, or sorry, a pre-made meal factory and it was only opened there last week by Thomas Byrne, one of the ministers, so it's um, you know, they, they are jumping from, from ladder to ladder, let's say so. Yeah, all higher and higher, yeah. So. All going well. So, I suppose, can you tell us about the new machine we're in here today? Yeah, so this is a, a new Grimmy 470 Veritron, so it's a four row harvester. Um, Finnegan's used to work two self propelled harvesters, but um, this machine has replaced them, and there used to be a guy chopping the stalks, another guy windrowing open in the field, so Normally he'd have 11 or 12 guys in the field at any one time. Now we're down to, I think, six. So there's me on the harvester, there's three lads drawn, and then there's two lads in the, uh, on the loaders in the yard, keep filling the lorries and bringing them back to the yard. So, yeah, so good labour saver. Is yeah, a oh, massive labour saver. And then I'm the only one in the field digging. There's no chopper. And that's the beauty of this machine. You can go wherever you want in the field. There's no having to open up drills so that you're dr not driving over them and all. So it's... Yeah. There. Oh, it's a very impressive machine. Very, just the price of it is. I think. <laughs> I think a lot, lot of thought went into it, but he he doesn't regret it now. I don't think. Yeah, but I suppose you're taking other like six people out of it. Yes, it's a major thing, and six tractors. Yeah. But even the way things are going with labour, it's just can't get anyone to do things like. Do you know what I mean? And good lads are very hard to get, and just to get through work, like we were trying to average, and like on a normal day, you'd easily dig three hundred and fifty ton with this easily. And that's going handy, like you could, but yeah. if you got into a real good go, and like this is real good conditions, we've a long enough run here, and like be, you could, yeah, you could easily pump out maybe four, 450 at least a day, like no problem. It all just depends on conditions. Yeah. But you can afford to probably go that bit slower and take your time, because um, we're filling on the move as well, so we are, so uh, there's no stopping or nothing, it's just keep going the whole time. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a very impressive machine, now, very impressive. And how do you find, say, with the four rows? Yeah, it took it took a bit of a it took a bit of uh, getting used to at the start coming in and stuff. But uh, as I was saying to Paul this morning, you wouldn't go back like it's like anything automatic car, manual car. Once you go automatic or the wider, you just don't go back. Yeah, like our, our guidance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I was saying. Like uh, Finnegan's all their tractors and guidance. Even some of the tractors there, I see your GPS on the two forty there, and he just comes in beside me and he puts it into into auto steer and away he's stuck there beside me and I'm not worried about going in or out or nothing all he does is keep at the same pace three or three and a half kilometres there and I'll work up and down the, the trailer and uh, everyone's happy and there's no spuds lost and just it's all efficiencies yeah. that's what Finnegan's that's what they're using all your GPS for it's just efficiencies like that's it everything is even this harvester is steering itself up the field if you want to um, but it's just uh, you go home at the end of the evening and you're not tired like yeah, it's a massive thing really, isn't it? Yeah. And like that with shortage of, shortage of labour, I suppose having the kind of autopilot and the guidance, it kind of yeah, reassures like, you that... The yeah, like because even Finnegan's even for even rolling the corn or whatever, like if you're a foot or two off every run, like uh, you're, you're just maximising your machine all the time. Yeah. I suppose with the increase in fertiliser prices and everything. Yes, yeah, like Finnegan's are variable rating and yield mapping and they, um, even on the combines, they're, um, they're um, taking all the data off that and bringing it into the office and they're using the Roush fertiliser spreader and they're variable yield mapping and variable rating the, the land so they're only literally putting out exactly what it needs. 
Yeah. They're not overspreading, like. Yeah, and avoid any kind of mists or overlaps or anything like that as well. Exactly, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, the Roush Fertile Spreader they have is has uh, 18 section controls. It's nearly like a sprayer, so. And it's the same with the sprayer. It's the, it's the same. It's all on yeah. variable, variable maps, so it is, so. It's beeping there that it's full. <laughs> yeah, I can see that behind us. Yeah, <laughs> so it may pull out. It doesn't be long, but getting full, so it doesn't. No. I'll just pull out a drill because we only have to open it up the field here. So, see, I, I didn't need anyone else coming alongside me or anything like that, or even uh, a windrower to open up the field. It was all just, just straight up the field. And how much would she hold now? Uh, it holds seven ton. So it does so, like it'll hold, yeah, it'll definitely hold six boxes. You might even get seven boxes, because then most of them boxes, especially when they're so clean like that, you get maybe 1,200 kilos into them, like. Yeah. So you would, so it's, you know, it's a, it's a good job. Ah, look at it, it's, I suppose no matter what size of bunker you have, you'd always want more, like. Yeah, that's it. But, uh, but it I is, it does, just... it does hold an awful lot, like, I tell you, I remember in the old harvest, we had to pick it out one day, because the chain broke, and, You'd know all about it when you have to pick seven ton of spuds out of, a, so. out of a hopper, like. And I suppose as well when she's doing the four runs, you'd kind of need yeah. to hold that. Yeah, like his old harvester was a two row, a 270 it was called, but it was a two two row with, with a seven ton bunker. And like you go half around the field, but with this yoke you'd be halfway up the field. It's an awful difference in, um, in, in output even, like it's, you wouldn't be long about opening the square up. Like you do two runs up the field and the boys could nearly turn like do you know what I mean yeah so it's a no it's a, a very impressive machine now very impressive so is there much of an issue with bruising or anything like that or no we things? just um it's very good now they often send out um it's called an electric spud so they just throw the spud in the in the the drill there and uh, I take it up the harvest as normal and it'll tell him where the bruising's happening on the harvest or or at what time it's happening and then they do when they go home every day they, they, they call a hot box so they'll put the spuds into a hot box and it'll show up the bruising the next morning so at least well we'd know I know you'd you'd harvest 400 ton but you'd um you'd know ah you'd know fairly quickly if you were damaging them very bad but no we there's often talk about the bunker machines damaging but it's all about how you do it like we put the fall breaker right into the box I don't yeah. let it up until it's nearly half full, so it's you shouldn't have damage. Yeah. You shouldn't have at all. And like there's a load of belts in that uh, fall breaker, and it's it eases the fall. Yeah. There's no big bangs coming down. No, 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 and yeah, like but no, you just have to be careful. Keep whenever it's dry going like that, you turn down your agitation. And you you might drive around a bit more and get a bit more clay up the webs just to push it on, so they're not sitting on the the cleaners and getting jumped around so, and this, like the quality of the spuds here is very good today very very good like it has actually been a very good year for farmers I think or even crops even has been good like it's been a favorable year for for everyone nearly I know we did wet winter like last but we're probably gonna get another wet winter as you see it rains cement every year doesn't it, it just comes in different ways yeah and to be fair, we've had a nice dry spell, so... We've had very good, yeah, so... And I suppose everyone's just kind of driving on now while the weather's good. Yeah, 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 like an awful lot of lads are well on. I know the boys are well on with the sewing. Like, they'll be in here probably later on or tomorrow after us. Once we get one field done, they'll come in and they'll they'll sow it because it's, this is the kind of ground, like, it, it, it grows great spuds. Like, they have to have a bit of everything, dry ground, wet ground, everything, because you couldn't put all your eggs in one basket. But um, this field now be heavy enough, so whenever we are finished, they'd be in straight away to sow, because if it got rained on, it wouldn't be just that easy sowed. Like. Yeah. And then it's later harvest and all that kind of stuff. And it's just a mix mixture of tillage as well, Finnegan's here, is yeah, it? They, yeah, they do. Um, they're probably not far off 2,000 acres of corn, like, and they've cattle as well and sprouts. So. Good mixture of stuff. They've an awful mixture of stuff, yeah, an awful lot of stuff. So. But I suppose when you're doing potatoes and stuff, you have to... Yeah, well, yeah, I suppose, yeah, like, they'll, they'll put wheat in after this, and I suppose it's to get the most out of their, they're going to get a real good yield of wheat after spuds, so. Yeah. Uh, it's, they, they, uh, just even to hold the ground, like. Yeah. Keep um, it, they keep the rotation, like, they might put spuds in this again in two or three years' time, because it'll be 
it wouldn't have had spuds in, spuds in a long time, this, this ground here. So, or maybe ever. It was always in tillage, to be honest. When you got this farm, there's about 250 acres in this farm. And half it was done with spuds this year and the other half will go uh, next year. So you're there now with the cameras. Yeah. Which ones here would you be kind of keeping an eye on most? Or? Um, you see, well, we can put it into automatic and it'll flash through them. You can see the stalks there. So as soon as, as soon as I go into reverse, it'll put on the reversing camera. But you can come all the way up along. So that's just underneath us. And then you come into your first Hollum roller, um, your bypass, or your into the next Hollum roller, into your multi steps. I know they're, they're full there with stalks, but there, that's the second multi step. So they're the cleaners. You'll see them working now in a second. Very good. I'll get back there. Oh yeah, you were just kind of running the last... Yeah, I was just taking that last little bit that I couldn't get. It's just all compacted in because it's the same width as the, as the two-row harvester. Maybe it's a tiny bit wider, but within reason. And see, it has to be probably within three metres wider, else you wouldn't be able to move them around. Like, they bring this around on a truck. They don't don't drive it on the road like so oh, it has yeah. to be it's a it's a big machine now on the road like yeah, so it's running some gaps and stuff she's a fairly big machine yeah but it's it's, it's it's very maneuverable i can steer the track by working the the joystick left to right or i can put it into four wheel steer so when i turn my front steer and the it the back wheel steer it's to be honest it's probably more maneuverable than the than a two row like yeah because it has two tracks and it's on a on a like a bogey you can twist This is where we fill on the go. Fill on the go, yeah. See, that's the best thing with the bunker. The boys can take their time getting in properly, and I can pick the time when 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 best to do it. Yeah. And I have to stop now because I'm in bunker mode. See, there's two modes on it because I was coming up the field. I put it into bunker mode and to to fill it up full. So I have to stop just to let this bit off, and then I can continuously fill it then. And say, so is there much setting up now when you get into the field? There would be. Well, diff you'd be constantly um, doing bits and pieces. So you would be constantly tweaking the whole time. And even yeah, different crops. Like car pinks have very very strong stalks. So you'd be putting your chopper down lower and you'd be going that bit slower and you'd have your hollum extraction which takes out your, your stalks. You'd put that more. That, that's where you'd get your damage, where you'd be very careful with damage is taken out because sometimes the spuds are still stuck to the, to the, the, the stalk and you could be pulling at them down. So you just have to be careful at that, all right. It's another load done. Another load done. She yeah. three loads done there in fills and what in like jig time. Minutes. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't be long with. And then I can see that behind me, I can reverse the bunker to oh, yeah. bring it down to me, so that I can reset and fill it full again. Because it'd be only a drop on the end, and I'd end up being full too quickly. Like, and how are you finding size this season? Um, I think it's been fairly good. The crop has been like uh, fairly good. Like, um, it's um. Yeah, like, crop is good size. You see, they, they're constantly watching them. Look, it's, uh, you know, it's all technology, even the GPS, they're, they're plotting where the spuds are good and bad and they're, they're watching them like a hawk and they're killing them for a certain market. So these are probably for seven and a half kilo uh, washing and the other field might be for four kilo. So it'd be smaller potatoes, but more of them. And they'd be planting them closer together to get smaller spuds and more of yeah. them and put them further apart to get bigger. So uh, look, it, it's, it's again all about farming. Far, everyone thinks farming is just a, a tractor, but there's an awful lot of technology in farming, as, yeah. as you know yourself, and that's the way it's going. GPS and um, very mapping and all that kind of stuff. It's ev everyone has to keep up with technology, and look. In fairness, Finnegans are, are really pushing that because they know they have to. It's yeah. all it's all efficiencies. That's it, I suppose, with scale as well. Yes. It's that kind of extra Yeah, yeah, well, look, uh, yeah, it, d definitely, like. So I suppose our, the case there is using our 
Trimble GFX 750 and Nav 900. Yeah, they, they, they're they using Trimble GPS for, for, for a lot of stuff. Like, they're there steering beside us there. The harvester to keep us parallel, like, simple things even like that, you think you wouldn't use it for and you would. Yeah, and I suppose, say, with spraying and spreading and all that. Oh, God, yeah. Stuff, yeah, and yeah. And they'd all be eyes of us. So. Yes. Well, they the, the spreader and the sprayer on eyes bus. So they they're work through the, the screens and the tractors and then you have your, your Trimble GPS. Um, like I know the, the spreader is doing variable yield mapping. So he'll go out and spread his P's and K's on this before he sows it or even before the potatoes or the, or the sprouts. Um, that seems to be a massive saving for them the way fertilizer is gone. So they're only putting the, the fertilizer the fertilizer on where it actually really needs to be like because yeah. um you might look at this field and think it's hungry for this that or the other but it might be perfect on the left hand side and the right hand side might be terrible so the left hand side they, they could easily say on 100 acres they could easily save a couple of ton like and fertilizers jumping through the roof it's probably doubling in price i don't know and i hear an awful lot of bad, bad about it but should the way it's going the government are going to cut you probably using fertilizer or do you know what I mean? As much as you can. So the way it's going, yeah. it's all going to be technology, GPS, variable yield mapping. Um, they look, they're doing grants there for tillage farmers there for, for spreaders at the minute. And I'd say it's paying dividends because sure farmers just switched on the spread and they went to the field, whereas the GPS ones are sh shutting them off in sections at the end and all. Yeah. And even you see when guys put it in first, they're like, should it not be on by yeah, now? Sure, yeah, and it just shows how much their eye is off. Because like yeah. most of these big spreaders now, they're they're nearly in the field 24 or 28 meters before it comes on because it, it's able to spread it that far like. yeah and, and it's, it's harder to judge when it's bigger as well oh well she can't you can't judge it no technology is i suppose the other thing then with eyes of us as well you're saving in that you don't have to get the screens the screens through. in it yeah and it's all through the one screen which is yeah and it stops cluttering the cab and stuff as well and exactly yeah and you can see your view and you don't have to have a load of different mountains for different screens it's all just put through the one screen in the tractor yeah